verse 1 and 2, and then we're going to jump down just to cover what's on the, uh, on the card. The Word of God reads, And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Yes, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not bow themselves to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. Amen? Amen. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, mm -hmm. for if thou wilt not hold him guiltless that taketh in its name in vain, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy manservant nor thy maidservant, thy, nor thy cattle nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Yes, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And all the people saw the thundering and the lightning and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw them removed and stood afar, and they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not. For God has come to prove you, and that is his fear, may be before your faces, and that ye sin not. These are the words that God has given for us on today. May God bless the readers here the rules of his word. Amen. I want to say to you, follow the recipe. Amen. Follow the recipe. Take a few moments just to think about the recipe. Amen. These cards that we send out, they came from AGB. And, and they're free. They're free. And usually they have somebody there that is cooking up something right there. And they are on the microphone like I'm on the microphone. They call you, come on over and give them a taste and stuff like that. We're putting such and such together. You can buy that on the counter over here. We've got something in display. It's only such and such price. You can take that to the restaurant. Here's a discount. You can all get some free cheese with that. La, 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 la. Okay? Yeah. So the person that's demonstrating is only showing you what you could do with the product. Right. Now, you could probably do a whole lot more with the product. You can put your own touches to it. Yeah. Really, all they following is a simple recipe. Yeah. Amen. Give an honor to God first and foremost, all of our ministers, our deacons, to the body of Christ, to these ushers, we thank God for you. Look at your neighbor and say, follow the recipe. Follow the recipe. Okay? Now, these recipes here don't really help you not sin before God. Whatever name is on here, it pretty much is a product that you can produce. Set it up as long as you follow the ingredients, follow the measurements, follow the cooking times. You cannot go wrong. The word of God has been given unto us so that we can do the same thing. Yes, if you take the time that God has given you, 
in order to follow the word that's written in this book, it will produce the thing that God says it will produce in the time that God said it would take to make. Many of us don't like to follow recipes. Many of us don't see the importance of God's word. Even in fellowship today, we're just waiting for it to be over. You person I'm talking to. Because I can give this to you in your hand, but it's up to you to follow. All right. Many of us have been given the word of God. We didn't follow. We know God, but not the recipe. Because if you read the word of God and you apply the word of God in your heart, then it will manifest what God says that it will manifest. Well, I pull Moses out because God took time with Moses and Moses took time with God. But in the time that Moses was up at Mount Sinai, God gave him the Ten Commandments. That's what I'm serving you today from God's Word. The Ten Commandments. Why do you think God gave us the <coughs> Ten Commandments? God does not want us to go through unnecessary things in life. So he's given us Ten Commandments to live by. To help us to be free from the drama. Free from the mess. Free from sin. Sin is so easy to, 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 to make a mess out of anybody's life. Right. Yes, you really don't have to go too far in order to be sinful. You can be sinful right now where you're sitting there. But I want to tell you today that what God has given us in his word is an important recipe that you cannot you can't mess this up. Because to do opposite of what he says is for you to do sin. To do opposite of what God is, is showing us in this written word puts us in a place to where we can meet hell fire. Some of us, because it's hot in Texas, don't really care about how hot hell is. <laughs> but I heard that hell is a hot place. Hot place. And you don't want to go there. God speaks in verse 20, chapter 20, verse 1. He says, God spoke all these words saying. The word helps us to understand that God himself gave us these words to live by. Yes, sir. The person that asks you, well, why are you following the Ten Commandments? Because God gave these words. Why? Why, why do you practice the Ten Commandments? Because God gave these words. He didn't say Moses gave. No, Moses didn't sit up there and conjure up these words. God gave these words to Moses. But I want you to just, to just kind of see the scenery. Because God gave the words to Moses. But when Moses had was well, the tablets, these people heard God speak from heaven the Ten Commandments. And in the vision that we have when we watch uh, the, 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 the movie, the cinematic version, that while God was speaking, lightning was carving the words into the tablets. That's how, that's how cinema would tell us that it was done. And many of us to, do not know what God sounds like because even the people in that time, they could not stand the hear the voice of God. God speaking right now and turning the ears. Because, Pastor, I know these things, but are you following the recipe? I know, I know you, I know you've known the Ten Commandments since you were young. Are you following the recipe? God speaks. God says, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. I stand on this first Sunday to declare these words to be God's words. God is still speaking today. Do you know that his word has not proven false. Do you know that God still expects you.
to not put nothing else, no other God before him. Praise the Lord. Why would God have to say this if there was no other God but him? Because in the world that we live in, sin and Satan continues to deceive people. Sin continues to, to be the way that, that, that man falls out of the relationship with God. And there's some of us who really think that the way we live our life is, is all right. But are you monitoring yourself following God's recipe? Are you just talking about how you feel and, and, and how things work out for you? Or can you see yourself within these tens obeying God's recipe? God speaks to us. And he says, I brought you out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt not have no other God before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images or likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is under the water under the earth. Yeah. I want to tell you today that everything that, that, that we see being created in our time goes against this world. Two weeks ago was Pride Week. Two weeks ago we seen rainbow flags flying throughout the nation. Two weeks ago we, we seen a hot air balloon that symbolizes these sinful activities. Two weeks ago. Now I pulled it out there just to pull you in because there are so many other things that are in place that you may not even know that these are uh, other images of other things besides God. Now, now when I was younger, I was interested in Islam. And I even studied a little bit. He says, I'm the Lord thy God, I'm jealous. Right. Yes, 
don't, 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 don't get caught up and, and, and think that, that, that I'm not paying attention to what God is saying. He says, do not bow down and serve them, for I am a jealous God. I had a question mark about a unicorn. I've never seen a unicorn in my life. But to see the trend that is out there in the world, it, it means one thing, but it may be pulling you in another direction. God is sensitive to, to what his people does. And those of us who are believers have to be more attentive to what we are part of. Because if it causes us to break the commandments of God, then it affects God. What am I saying this to you for? I, I want you to know that there are things that the world produces that is automatically to draw you away Amen. from the faith that you think you have. Amen. Following the recipe, God doesn't want you to bow down and serve them. Amen. Amen. Just like these images and these statues, and I have nothing against Martin Luther King, but Martin Luther King ain't God. And there's a monument that has been put up in our time so that we can come by and remember something. But even Martin himself would not have approved or promoted someone to worship his statue over God. What am I saying? I'm not saying the, the importance of the man is not there. What I'm saying is <laughs> those Ten Commandments That's right. is more important That's right. to God. Okay, so walk with me just for a little while. He says, Thou shalt not bow down to them uh, thyself to them, nor serve them, for I am a jealous God, visiting iniquity of the fathers unto the children of the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Let me let me open that up real good because many of us have got ourselves together and, and we got the set of rules and discipline that we live by, but our children and our grandchildren, those that are behind me, God said, you got yourself right, but your children and grandchildren don't know me like how you know me. And I have, have I dealt with your iniquity and I'm dealing with theirs and they don't even love me. Amen. God put this out a long time ago for us to be able to, to, to see how he's affected by sin being in our life. Yes. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Because we're his creation. And he loves us. Yes, and he cares about us. He says, showing mercy to thousands of them that love me and keep my word. Amen. 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 Look at your name saying, follow the recipe. Follow, follow the recipe. God speaks first about his relationship with you and I. God wants us to know that he's carefully watching over our life, our children's life, our grandchildren's life. He said, I'm in here with you. Yes, he said, don't, don't find yourself out there worshiping something else besides me. Right. Right. Amen. Right. Oh, help me, Jesus. Yes. Do you know what is the worst image to follow in the world? Amen. Your own. Hello. Your own. There's so many of us who do things because we felt like it. There's so many of us that put ourselves above God. Here, this is what God has said. You said, I'm going to do me. That's it. Oh, Lord. I'm not talking about what somebody else has created. I'm talking about you putting yourself in a position to where you think that you made you. Yeah. Oh, you feel like, like you got it all figured out. Yeah. Oh, Don't you know, can't nobody uh, undo what you have done on yourself? But God. And here we are holding grudges with people in the world on some things that we think about us because our value in us is bigger than everything else that's around us. Don't miss yourself when you talk about worshiping other gods. Don't miss yourself when you talk about having images. You are part of that on the earth. You too. Yeah, you know yeah, Some of us have looked at ourselves and, and our success has placed us to where we don't need God. <laughs> Lord, Lord, Lord. Our success has put us in a position to where it, it, it doesn't make sense for me to pray. Mm -hmm. our, our, ourselves have put us in a, you know, in a position to where we say things when God knows my heart. Yes, he does. That's right. Uh, that's it. He, knows. he knows your heart. There's more reason for you to submit to him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because he knows your heart. Yes, sir. 
So God deals with the relationship with him. He said, Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. When I was growing up, they used to say, Don't you be saying the Lord's name for no reason. Amen. Oh, yep. You hit your toe and, Oh, Jesus, no, no, no. Don't, don't be calling the Lord's name in vain. They educated us to help us know that it was important to know his name, but don't misuse the purpose. Because at the mention of his name, Satan and those imps, they tremble in fear. Calling on the name of Jesus will cause the world to stand still. It ain't just about your toe. It ain't just about you getting your way. It's not about you being frustrated. It's not about you putting slang and saying some words you probably shouldn't say with God's name. It's about Him. Yeah. Right. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue yeah. shall confess that He is Lord. That's power yeah. in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus said it like this. He said, anything you ask for in my name, it shall be given. Don't you misuse this name. Can you witness? Yeah. Some of us are sensitive about our name. Amen. When we say things like that, you don't call me out my name. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We, we often do that, but you know what? There's one name that you need to make sure that you have the right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Maybe two. Yeah. Maybe three. Uh, yeah. All right, y'all right, walking with me? Yeah. So, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Yes, sir. That's the when is the Sabbath. When I was growing up, people would question that. I remember when I was growing up, nobody worked on Sunday. Amen. Right. Everybody was in church somewhere. Right. They called it the most divided day right. of the year where people went to their churches. Yeah. White went to their church, black went to their church. Uh -huh. You know, and nobody worked on Sunday. There were things closed yeah. on Sunday. <coughs> Mama, grandmama, they all would cook. Got things laid out Saturday night. Yes, huh? yes, there wasn't no cooking going on on Sunday. It was done on Saturday. Amen. That's right. Praise the Lord. Praise oh, Lord. And, and the thing is, I love about it where, where they've already prepared. So when you wake up in the morning, you smell it. Yeah. And they say, don't you touch my pot. Yeah. Uh, everybody know about that? Yeah. But you don't pee it in the pot. Uh -huh. On Sunday, ain't that right? Cake already baked. Icy. Come on the cake. But you going in there? On Sunday, amen. Because we go to worship, we're going to give God praise, amen. Yeah. And then when you come back, oh, yeah. amen, then you can indulge, amen. Right. And I, I don't know, I don't actually, I do know, when I was growing up, Kentucky Fried Chicken made some good chicken back then. Yeah, that's right. And Sunday, while we was in between services, they would go get a bucket of chicken. Uh, huh? Yeah. But the real fellowship happened when we got back home. Everybody would go to my grandmother's house. We would eat. Everybody would eat fine. We'd sit on the porch. We'd eat watermelon. Right. Spit the seeds out on the ground. We didn't have no grass. It was just dirt. <laughs> I got grass now. You know what I mean? <laughs> my grandma's house, there was no grass there. We tried. We tried to pull some grass somewhere and put it there. But it was just too much traffic in her yard for grass to, to, to sit. Amen? Might be different in Texas. Amen? Nope. So the Lord would, would help us to understand that the Sabbath day, we should keep it holy. What well, pastor, when is the Sabbath? Well, some think the Sabbath is on the Sabbath. Six days he worked. Sunday being the first day of the week. I say, yeah, that might have been the Sabbath. But in our tradition, because Jesus Christ rose on Sunday morning, that's where I worship. That is the time that we've given to God by faith because Jesus rose on the third day. We knew he died on a Friday. And on Sunday morning he got up. And most churches in tradition, Baptists, whomever, we worship on Sunday. That's why all the cooking was done on Saturday. That's why all the businesses was closed after Saturday. Because we as a nation understood that Sunday was a day of worship. How many of us still feel the days of the day of worship? Amen. Six days God made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that was in them and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord believed the Sabbath day and howled it. Here is my one of my favorite verses. 
God moves off of himself and he deals with the house. Yes, sir. Honor thy father and thy mother that the days may be long upon the land the Lord thy God giveth you. Yes, God, after himself, directs our attention to our house. Yes, this is where the pain lies. Yeah. You go through things in the world, right. but your real fight is at home. Yeah. How many of us know our real fight is at home? Uh -uh. Raising children is not easy. Amen. It's not. God put in the Ten Commandments, even before you came along, honor thy father and thy mother that your days will be long. Do you know that they're watching over you? Right now, your mother and father is a supervisor in your life. They have a responsibility by God train you up in the way of the Lord. Amen? And sure enough, there are many of us who been to church growing up because our mom and daddies were, were in church and then there's so many of us who weren't in church at all because our mother and father did not believe that God spake these words. They were not in a, in a perfect mindset to know that, that by giving my children, not giving the children the word of God that it will be much harder for them when they grow up. I want you to think about this because in our life and in our struggle we find ourselves with a harder challenge today, giving our children things like the Word of God that they're really not interested in. They're trying to be something in the world, but they're losing the relationship with God. God said, third and fourth generation that hate me. I don't think anybody here would say that they hate God. But I would say to everyone that is in here, there's some challenges in your faith. Because we're not obedient to our mother and father. We're not obeying them. We're not honoring them in the way that God has asked us to. And they're tolerating and they're trying to be great parents. There is no badge that they're going to receive here on earth that says you are a great parent. If your children do not make it to heaven, which is the greatest honor of all. Amen. It'll fall back on the overseer, the supervisor. Yes, you got to give it to them. You got to give them the word. You got to give them the truth. Amen. Honor thy father and mother that the days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Give it thee. After the house, the parents, it helps us to see what society is like. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. You know, these things are outside of your house. These things that God brings to your teaching and teaching and shows you how you ought to be with mankind, how you ought to be with your within your community. Now, some of these challenges might be present in your house. You know, maybe your child, maybe your husband, or when took something out your purse that you probably didn't ask you for. God's word is still true. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not bear false witness. That means thou shalt not lie. All the people saw the thunderings, the lightnings, the noise, the trumpets, the mountain, smoking. When they saw it, they removed and stood afar off, and they said unto Moses, Speak with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with 